and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today's guest is Dr. John Dever from Thomas Nelson Community College. Welcome. Robin, I'm very happy to be here. Happy that you came by. And you know, I was looking at your, your bio and I realized you've been at, at Thomas Nelson now, well, this time, mm -hmm. for just about a year. That's right, I started in October of 2011 but I had been at Thomas Nelson from 1975 to 1995, 20 years as a faculty member in English and as an academic administrator. And then I uh, went off to uh, several other community colleges in Virginia uh, in various administrative roles, but I always kept my home here on the peninsula. So I'm oh, delighted. That's to, great. I'm delighted to be back here at the college. And we're lucky that, that you came back <laughs> as well, and you came back to head up our campus. That's wonderful. Um, we we're going to talk today a little bit about the workforce. Oh, no, we we're going to talk first about your booming enrollment. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, from my own personal experience, I, um, because of the ages of my sons, I know a lot of kids who are in that just about to graduate from high school or, or just did graduate. And I'm stunned at how many of them are starting their careers at Thomas mm -hmm. Nelson. Um, it's kids that, you know, would have previously said, I'm going straight to a four-year college, either don't have the money or are cautious right now in this economy. And, and so many of them are starting at Thomas Nelson. Well, of course, we, uh, our enrollment has grown significantly over the past five years. We now serve over 16,000 students annually at Thomas Nelson. Holy cow, yeah. that's like, you know, <clears throat> UVA numbers <laughs> almost. And I know they're not all full time, but that's a lot of people. And that's an 18% increase in our headcount over the past, uh, past five years. Wow. And if you count the actual credits that they take, it's a 31% increase. So we've really grown. And um, we, I bet you're um, stretching <laughs> at the seams there because it's a nice sized campus, yes, but it's not. that's right. And of course, you know, as you know, we've added the historic Triangle Campus up in oh, uh, Williamsburg. Right. And uh, that's made a real difference in our ability to serve the Upper Peninsula as mm -hmm. well as here uh, on the Lower Peninsula with our Hampton Campus. Uh, but the uh, opportunities that we have for recent high school graduates to come to us to receive the first two years of baccalaureate education have never been better. We have guaranteed admission agreements with all the major, uh, with all the public universities in the state and many of the private universities. So that if the students come to us, achieve a given GPA and meet other requirements that they, the university might have, they're guaranteed admission to the university uh, after they complete their associate degree with us and, and move on. And I think that gives those kids a, a peace of mind, you uh -huh. know, they oh. understand that they're getting a good education, that those schools will accept, and um, certainly the price differential and the ability to live yep. at home is really a way they can afford to do what they want to do. Yeah, well affordability is one of our, uh, one of our key aspects, uh, one of our uh, essential elements of our mission is to keep our uh, higher education ex ex accessible and affordable. Mm -hmm. um, currently a student can um, get a full year's education at Thomas Nelson, uh, uh, 30 credits, for under $3,800. Holy cow. And when you compare that to what the costs are uh, at a residential institution. Right, it's probably uh, about three times it, that. It's, it's very, very much higher. And so, you don't have that room and board. I yeah. mean, you know, if you have parents <laughs> <laughs> who can keep you around for a little yeah. while. And I can speak, uh, I can speak directly to this. Uh, my own son um, uh, went to Thomas Nelson uh, directly out of high school. Uh, he did very well, graduated from, the, from, the, uh, from Thomas Nelson, summa cum laude, made me very proud as a parent, I'll have to tell you. Congratulations. Transferred to UVA, completed his degree in biology, and uh, several years ago completed his PhD in biochemistry from uh, Virginia Commonwealth University. So I know firsthand uh, what a difference Thomas Nelson can make. Well, you know, I really think um, it used to be sort of that the kids who maybe didn't get into their first choice school or mm -hmm. weren't 100% ready for, for a four-year college started at community college. And now it's really not. I mean, mm -hmm. those are the same kids yeah. who are starting at Thomas Nelson now. We, of course, want to serve those who uh, maybe are not sure about what they want yet, and mm -hmm. we, that's part of our mission. We, have a, uh, we are comprehensive in terms of in terms of our admission policy, 
but we are getting uh, many of those uh, very capable students who are coming to us doing great work. Our faculty is prepared to challenge them through our, through our courses. Uh, we, have a, we have a very strong honors program uh, and other ways of challenging the students to have that full collegiate experience. And the feedback we get from both the students and, who, and the universities after, the transfer, after they transfer is very positive. They've been well prepared and their performance at the university is as good as, if not better than, the students who start off there at the very beginning. Well, you know, you have to have a certain amount of drive to, and I'll say this because I've, I've seen, seen firsthand kids who didn't, but a certain amount of drive to make it work. When you have to get yourself up every morning and drive to campus and, you know, go out and, and do what you need to do to be successful and, and get there. And, and I do think sometimes those kids are a little more driven to, to succeed. Well, we work with them and we understand that it's important that they take the classes, but we also try to connect with them as persons. Mm -hmm. uh, our faculty uh, take that strong interest in our staff and those students. We keep our classes small. We don't have those huge lecture sections. See, that's you know, a big thing too. With, uh, if you're taking you know, Biology students, 101 yeah. or whatever, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, in a, you're in a small class. You're going to get that individual attention uh, and it makes a great deal of difference. And we work with students who are, you know, learning to be uh, and function at the collegiate level. Of course, we also work with our high schools, many of our high schools providing uh, capable students with dual enrollment uh, opportunities. That is, they can receive high school credit and college credit at the same time. Uh, and you know, you asked if I had any personal connection. Mm -hmm. I forgot. My younger son is at the governor's school, and okay. so I think, uh -huh. I think that's he's right. technically we, uh, getting a lot of uh, college right. credits from college Thomas credit Nelson there, right next and door. The, the students uh, in, in those classes are following the syllabus that we have at, Tom, at Thomas Nelson, mm -hmm. uh, and our, our faculty and our deans closely supervise those activities. So it's a win-win. It's a win for the students, for their parents. Uh, for the for the schools and for the college. And we're lucky that you're in Hampton. I know you serve the region, mm -hmm. but, but being in Hampton makes it um, that much more convenient for our kids to get there quickly and to have that resource right here. Yeah. Well, of course, the, the, our location right off, uh, right off uh, uh, Interstate 64 in the Hampton Center Parkway makes mm -hmm. us convenient for whether it's uh, Hampton, Newport News, Pocosin, uh, York County, James City County or, or Williamsburg, right. all, all the localities that we serve, uh, it's very, very convenient. Now, if, if, if we were talking to a high school student, and probably we're actually talking to their parents because uh -huh. I don't know that high school students <laughs> are going to be watching us, but what advice would you have you know, as they enter that senior year and, and begin to look ahead? Okay. Well, I would particularly encourage them to get a goal, have a goal understand what it is that you want to do and achieve. What I found is that when students have a goal, understand that they want to pursue studies in this area and want a career in this, it makes all the difference in the world in terms of providing them with the motivation to mm -hmm. persist. Mm -hmm. It's okay if later you change the goal, and that's fine, but have the goal to begin with. That's an important piece because I think um, if you're wandering, that, that shows. And a lot of things are transferable. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to take some of the same courses. The other thing I, I would encourage those students to do is to make sure that their basic skills, particularly in mathematics, English, reading and writing, are mm -hmm. up to the level that they need to be. Um, one of the things that we do for students when they come to us is we give them a placement test. We don't require SATs, but we do have a placement test that makes sure that they're ready to do college level work. Right. And they need to be prepared to do that. Now if they're not prepared, uh, we have what we call developmental studies in mathematics and English that work with those students to bring them up to, to make sure that they're ready for college level work. But many of those students, if they just take that senior year seriously, <laughs> that's uh, hard. That's hard uh, sometimes. Will, will not have to do that. And mm -hmm. so uh, we plan to work uh, more closely with our school systems uh, to make sure that students are academically prepared as they, as they move through the community college. That's important. Now, if a student comes to you and they're trying to do the two plus two, mm -hmm. so 
can you could you have can your advisors or, or guidance folks help gear them toward which co which classes to take and, and what that program yeah. ought to be yes we certainly we have a, a group of uh, you know a, a very capable and dedicated group of counselors and we have a group that is specifically assigned to work with our transfer students that maintains very good relationships with their counterparts at the universities and knows what works and can help uh, help that the process if a student is unrealistic they can help them be a little bit more realistic or on the other hand if they maybe could achieve more maybe it's a reach you know, sometimes help, we help want to expand past. their horizons mm -hmm. and encourage them to pursue greater opportunities we work with them in that way as well that's wonderful. So that way, you know, a kid just doesn't sign up for classes, but as you say, has a plan, has a goal, kind of has something yeah. mapped out. And we encourage them to get involved in campus activities once they're there. It's, classes are important, but it's important to have that full collegiate experience. Mm -hmm. And we work to, uh, we work to provide those, those activities, those connections, those opportunities for personal growth and development that I think is a, is a key part of that collegiate experience. It is so different, I think. Like some students are able to do that and, and be involved in the mm -hmm. activities, but a lot of other students maybe have to work mm -hmm. or have to um, you know, have other responsibilities and still get all the academics, yeah. but maybe don't do the additional things that, that you offer. And we've been talking primarily now about our recent high school graduates. Again, we serve those students very well, but I'd also like to point out that we, you know, our student body is all ages. And uh, in fact, 45% of our student body is 25 years of age or older. Now, most of those students were serving through our workforce development program, but many of them- And we're gonna talk about that right. a, a, another time. Uh, but many of those students, uh, a number of those students are also coming to us uh, to uh, pursue uh, their, their dream of a baccalaureate degree and to get the first two years with us. And one of the things I found as a faculty member, how powerful it is to have that mix of ages and life experiences in the classroom when they're all 17, 18, 19 year olds, you know, they kind of all think in the same way. And it's fun because you know, there's uh, a tightness there uh -huh. that that similarity brings. Uh, yeah, but, but when you bring that mixture in and that diversity of experiences, uh, it is a much more powerful learning environment. It's one of the things I enjoyed most as a faculty member, mm -hmm. playing to that diversity of exper life experiences mm -hmm. in our classes. Right, you can learn a lot from somebody who's been through it. And as I said, a lot of these students are more driven because it is harder to go back. You know, if you can go straight from high school to college, it's a, it's a convenient transition. But if you have been in the workforce, or let's talk about people who've been in the military and come back, mm -hmm. you, you really have a drive yeah. to succeed and to have a plan for your future. And I'll just say we're very committed, of course, to serving our veterans. Uh, as well as our active duty personnel, mm -hmm. uh, their spouses, dependents, children. Um, and we have a comprehensive program in that regard. And we're very proud of being uh, noted as a military friendly college by GI Jobs magazines that does the rating on that. Yeah, that's so important in this yeah, area. In this and area, so important critical. for that transition mm -hmm. because we are sort of ending some of the deployments and, and coming to the conclusion mm -hmm. of that and, and those folks who've served our country so well are preparing for transitions and other careers. Yeah, those students are very, very important to us. Mm -hmm. And they're just at a different stage of their life, you know, they're m much more serious and have a lot. Yeah. Uh, and again, their presence in our classes adds so much. I to, think so too. to the dynamic of the learning. Their experience mm -hmm. is different and they can be those role yeah. models yeah. For, so, for some of the younger exactly, students as Exactly, exactly. Well. That's one of the most powerful things about the learning environment at Thomas Nelson Community College. That's wonderful. Well, thank you. Is there anything else you wanted to add about the um, academic side? And, and I'm gonna have you talk about workforce uh, another Well, time. I'll just say, I just want you to understand how committed our faculty is to excellence in the academic program. Uh, it's been with the, I call it, it's in the DNA of Thomas Nelson. And uh, when we bring new faculty on, I've seen that same commitment. They understand that's their mission. We want to do those first two years of a baccalaureate program uh, as well as, as anyone, and we, we really excel at doing that.
That's wonderful. And those smaller classes really help, I think, mm -hmm. because kids don't get lost. Yeah. So thank you. Thank well, you, John, for stopping by. Uh, Robin, I, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. And I hope when, uh, if you have a neighbor or a, a child or a grandchild who's maybe getting ready to graduate from high school, you think about this 2 plus 2 program and the transfer at, and starting at community colleges. Um, good foundation and a, a money saver as well. Thank you.